step is where we introduce oxygen back into the um, wort that had just been boiled because when you boil the wort it uh, it boils out the oxygen or the, the dissolved oxygen out of the wort so now yeast want oxygen to in order to ferment so what I have here is a oxygen bottle I got from the local hardware store and here I boiled a silicone hose with a stainless steel aeration stone and I'm going to put this all together and I'm going to um, re uh, reoxygenate my wort. Okay, now let's oxygenate the wort. So we pull off the cap, pick up my tube, and careful not to bump into anything that's contaminated. Just drop it right in there. And I'm going to turn on the oxygen. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So now we have uh, oxygen being reintroduced into the wort. It's bubbling through, so it'll dissolve in there. And uh, after about a minute or two, we're going to have a oxygen-rich environment for the yeast to thrive in. Okay, there we go. Hopefully it's all oxygenated. The yeast is ready to put in the fermenter with the rest of the wort. So let me get another swirl, get that stirred back up in the solution, and then I want to put that right into the right into the carboy with the rest of the wort. All right, it's time to add the yeast. You can see here I have my uh, my yeast here, and I'm going to just for sanitary reasons spray the outside lip where the yeast is going to come in contact with as it pours. Okay, I want to make sure it's nice and sanitized. And uh, we're also going to give it a good swirl, stir up all the yeast sediment back into the solution if it's settled out. Carefully remove the, the rubber stopper without touching the lip. Make sure it's all swirled up in solution. And I'm just going to just go ahead and pour it in. And then I'll put an airlock on it. In just a moment and cap it up okay now it's time to put the airlock on so I'm just going to go ahead so leave this cap on pull off the little white part give it a little spray just to make sure it's sanitary then I'm going to jam in my airlock piece into here just like that that I've already sprayed pre previously with sanitizer and the airlock is dry, so I need to fill it up. And what I find is the easiest thing is since I already have the spray bottle in hand, I just go ahead and give it a a filling of the sanitizer. And there we go. So now I got the airlock on here. It keeps the bad air from getting in. Allows the carbonation to, to bubble out. Everything, everybody will be happy. I'm gonna put this thing in a dark corner of my cool basement. Uh, hopefully around 65 degrees ideally and I'm going to wrap it in a blanket just to keep any ambient light off of it because light can uh, skunk your beer as well so uh, I'm going to find a nice quiet dark corner to, to put this thing in uh, when fermentation starts like this this is, this is less than 12 hours after I've uh, inoculated this thing so we can kind of see here that it's going crazy the yeast is going crazy here, so if you look at the airlock, there it goes, yeah, it's bubbling really good. So this is what active fermentation looks like, and uh, this will go on for uh, at least a few days, if not a few more after that. After like a couple of days, it starts to get real slow, and it's pretty well fermented out already after the third day here. So now it's just a matter of letting it complete the fermentation and and then bottling it or or kegging. To continue watching the next video in my home brewing basic series, click on the link provided, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.